Hello my friends, I hope you had a fantastic day we are now wherever you are. This week I'm back with a brand new episode of the podcast. If you did wish to uh, not miss the next set of interviews we're doing into the new year, make sure to be subscribed. This week I'm back with Debbie Cat to talk all about presentation skills, why to do it, how to do it, and then how to be your authentic self when doing it as well. This of course is when you're performing potentially on camera, but also in front of a live audience as well. Thank you ever so much for coming back and joining me once again, and I'll see you in just a moment for this fantastic interview. Good morning, I'm Debbie Catt. I help people get their messages across with power and personality. I've got a background in crisis management, public relations, and I'm a presentations coach. Fantastic, thanks so much for the time, Debbie. And I think your space, my space, spaces in general, as we alluded to at the start in our pre-show conversation, is in this interesting scenario at the moment, right? Because I think everyone's kind of gone, uh, would it be fair to say slightly survival? Would, would you say that's fair? Absolutely so. They battened down the hatches and, and rightly so. It's been a dreadful time for everybody, both personally and financially, business-wise. And I think I think it's one of those things, and people have asked me, you know, I've had some DMs, I've had some conversations with people lately about, you know, why am I still continuing the show, right? Because I've been very honest and very open with the fact that it actually costs me money more than it creates money at the moment, right? Depending on your perspective. Of course, there's levels of marketing there and so on and so on. There's some benefits there, of course, but the actual crux of the show isn't for me to make money. The crux is to hopefully add educational value, entertainment value, etc. in that respect. And it's one of my ways to give back. But I guess that does pose the question of how and why should we both still have a commercial entity, right? Because you coach people on presenting and I create the shiny looking video of that presentingness, right? Taking place. So why should someone look to do that now more than ever, I think? Because actually, I think that's when you should lean into your quirks. You should lean into your personality. You should lean into your brand because they're exactly the reasons because there is still money to be made. There is still people spending money. It's not all, uh, as we alluded to at the beginning, uh, pre-show. You know, I don't subscribe to the model of, yes, it's harder. Let's be realist, right? It is harder than it was 12 months ago. Yes, sure, fine. But it's not the end of the world. The world will continue to spin and this period will pass too, right? But I think the ones who will come out better, quote unquote, or in a stronger position will be those who have continued the brand work, have continued the marketing work, have continued the, uh, I guess, the uh, visibility or pressure, you could say, on the market. But why specifically should someone look to present specifically? Well, it's not presenting. I think that's where people go a little bit wrong here, Carlton, because presenting is part of communication and communication is what we all do. Even when we're not speaking, we're communicating non-verbals, gestures, little movements, all these things. Now, yes, it has got tough for people out there, but the world is going on. People are still eating, drinking and being merry, hopefully uh, coming up to, to Christmas and so on and, and the new year. But but also it's really important to uh, just carry on with normal life. Everything, clothes to wear, um, people are, you know, traveling, people are doing things and hobbies because life is for living and working is one thing, but living is another. So all these services and, and activities, they have to go on. Therefore, they all need the businesses that we run. Now, um, the, the problem about business is that um, there's probably a hundred people, Carlton, I know you're unique and, and lovely with it and everything, and obviously, but um, there's at least a hundred, if not a thousand, there's thousands of people who do exactly what we all do. Uh, and so, but how do people choose? Because the only thing that we've got that's different is ourselves. Now, you uh, do your presentation, your, your personality comes out in different ways. I, I'm the same. Um, now, you know, I will introduce you to my co-presenter, Mr. Squeaky. Now, he comes up with all things and he's, it is strange, I know. But I, I, I've got lots of friends who are, are presentation coaches, public speaking coaches, and they, they, <laughs> they wouldn't be seen on a stage with a squeaky chicken. Now, it's because my personality is I am slightly quirky. Um, it's not it's not manufactured because this is the key thing things have to be authentic and people have to get to know you as a person 
and your personality to know whether they like you, whether they could work with you, whether they trust you, all these things. Now, how do you do that, Carlton, in a very short time with, you know, especially when you, people do um, networking groups, 60 second presentations? Well, honestly, um, they are all are mostly the same. Hello, my name's so-and-so, I do this. Well, it, it's, it's really defeating their own object because I'll have to tell you something about presenting. See here, before anything happens, you've got to get people's listening ears up, okay? Because otherwise, they're down and nobody can hear anything and they won't listen. Uh, it's not uh, happening at all. So what we have to do is to, we have to get some personality into our presentations. We have to be authentic, but how do we do that? Well, the first thing uh, is, no, there are three key aspects to presenting. And I've gone into, you've noticed how cleverly I did that, that Carlton, but three, um, but three. First is context. OK, context. Second is content. And third is delivery. And we'll be doing a little bit about each of those um, uh, this morning just to give people an idea. But context, I mean, here we are. We're talking about the festive season, New Year. But, you know, whenever it is and when you're doing it doesn't matter if you're near, um, I don't know, Easter or Valentine's Day, you could put something in there that would be relevant. But it's not even that it's, you know, obviously um, during lockdown, um, people were talking about certain aspects of, of, of their work and, and things which were uh, 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 happening then. And it was really, really difficult. But, you know, sort of um, customising, if you like, customising your um, material. I also think it does open up a, an interesting point of view as a podcast host, because I've had the podcast, as I said, you know, since 2020, since pre-pandemic, all the way through the pandemic up to now. And, you know, I've had to look at, OK, what subjects, what topics, what things am I focusing on? And, uh, you know, the reason why I mention it here with context is because it's context in regards to what I feel my audience, my my viewers, quote unquote, the people who are likely to consume this piece of content or may consume this piece of content or may stumble upon this piece of content are going to want to know the answer to, right? Now, there is some more generic ones like pain points related to video, which is confidence, what's great content about, et cetera, et cetera. Some of which cross over with what we do. Sure, fantastic. But also there's going to be some more specific ones now, like how do we generate more money? How does financial stuff work, okay. right? So I think someone is a content creator or someone who creates content, whether you're financially that way, as in, you know, you are in the financial space, of course you're going to have an uptick because everyone wants to know how to make more money right now. But if you have a knowledge because you've run a business, because you've done this, because you've you know done a side flip, you've done this, you've done that, whatever it may be, that has a relevance to finances, maybe that's a good idea to actually use this context, use this opportunity of this economic interesting situation we all find ourselves to actually create content that could increase that no like or trust, could increase that personality driven piece of content that says, hey, by the way, yeah, I know this stuff about video, but actually I could probably potentially help you with some of this stuff as well and actually how it actually becomes a transactional piece or could correct that no like and trust that then leads on to a transaction as well because... Well, of course. I mean, you know, you're, you're an expert in this anyway, Carlton. You know the sort of things. And I'm going to, I'm just going to drop in a little gold nugget here because this is really important for people, whatever they're doing with their content, OK, the first thing that goes through anybody's head when they've got this material coming at them, either in a you know, podcast or a, is whiff him. OK, whiff him. What's in it for me? Now, until you've answered that, until you've given them some reason to listen to you, then again, we've got ear flaps which are down. OK, so whip him. What's in it for me? Now, if you're talking about the fact that you've already got some experience in something that will help those people get over a problem that they've got or a particular context. Brilliant, because that's the point. It's it's the relevance to them. If your content is not relevant, if it's all about you, if it's all about what you've done and everything, it, it's just going to be a waste of time and nobody's going to listen. So remember the old ear flaps, you know, they're never going to be, they're never going up. Okay, so whiff him, what's in it for me? Now, once you've done that, 
and you've given people a little bit of uh, you know interest or intrigue, then um, they're going to listen a little bit more. But some people say, well, you know, uh, boo, I don't have. Well, the point is, there's lots of little tricks here right at the beginning and grabbing attention. Now, the, one of the first things you could do is come on and you can do something really bonkers now like this. Um, I say to people, elephants never forget, but people do. Now, you don't always want to mess your hair up or wear something silly like that. OK. And again, because it's uh, authentic for me, I love doing that. I was a guide at London Zoo for 10 years and, and I actually used to wear the costumes and, well, obviously didn't just frighten the real animals, but when we had uh, events and things. So, you know, this is me. This is so I'm doing this. I show people a bit like that. But if I come on or I'm on particularly online with something like that, that that's got people's attention straight away. A lot of people don't want to do that. Then they're, they're what I would call sort of um, proper phobic. OK, and that, that's not going to work. So you come on and you say a little uh, catchy thing that catches their attention. Like, for instance, attitudes are contagious. Is yours worth catching? Or, or um, you never get a second chance to make a good first impression. Now, OK, it's not, you know, earth shatteringly, technically brilliant or anything, but it's something that gets people's attention slightly. Or you could come in with a quote, um, you know, or, or some statistics or something, but something that just breaks that um, barrier to getting people's attention. Because what's in it for me? Oh, this might be interesting, or this look, this person looks bonkers, or um, I might have some fun here. You know, those are the things, but it has to be right for the person who's presenting. And it's all about thinking about your audience. You know that. 100%. Don't... And I think, you know, and just to give the, the audience some more context around how to do this in content, what we're talking about here is a hook. Right? How are you going to hook so someone from scrolling, right? Absolutely. We're in a world where everyone has a phone. Everyone, to be fair, 95% of the world have a professional camera, regardless of they're a videographer anymore, because of how cheap, quote unquote, the cameras have got now. So there's a big difference in, in actually the deciding factor on whether your content gets seen, looked at, consumed, is what you say. It isn't necessarily it looks and sounds nice, right? But if you are someone who sells, like me, who looks and sound, it looks and sounds nice, you have to up what that looks and sounds like and be talking about good things Absolutely. as well, right? <laughs> yes. Because you have to yeah. outperform the people doing it on their phones, right? Because that's what you sell. Mm -hmm. So you, to an extent, have to, you can't have the caveats that we would add if you weren't. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the content which you provide has to add quote unquote value. The issue that comes with this is it's subjective. That's the issue. So, to someone who's maybe new to content, who's because you alluded to it a little bit when you were talking about coming on and presenting and, and, and being that authentic self for you. But that's very easy for me and you to say because we've had multiple years, multiple, you know, long periods of time doing it, right? So we don't have the lack of confidence, the lack of understanding, the lack of belief in doing it because we own who we are and we know who we are and we know who we serve. But for someone who maybe is on the fence, maybe is a little bit concerned, maybe is not that confident yet they want to they want to tip their toe in they want to go okay i'm going to do content okay i'm going to start doing public speaking okay i'm going to start talking a little bit more structured about how i serve people how i help people because i think there's a lot of people especially at the moment where they have a lot of knowledge to give they have a lot of understanding to give but because of mm -hmm. their own either self belief concern or mm -hmm. legitimately actually i'm quite concerned whether i'm going to still be in business or not right uh, oh, yeah. absolutely. But they're I, less I, likely to push honestly, themselves outside that comfort zone so how would you no. help someone do that well there's two things first of all let me tell you i do understand about confidence issues um it wasn't that long ago uh I, jo I joined the professional speaking association in 2005 which okay for some people is a, a lifetime but there were times when before that when I, in some of my public roles, when I had to do presentations, 
to big groups of people and I had to wear a ball gown to because it was big posh do's and I had to walk about with a tea cloth iced water tea cloth stuck on my chest because I used to go so pink from the anxiety so I know what it's like you people I always say they're not necessarily born good public speakers they become that and you can learn so I understand about confidence issues let me put that to bed straight away and 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 you're absolutely right people and their confidence it's often what pre prevents them and it's not just their business but their whole careers uh, and in life generally confidence is a huge issue so I do appreciate that so let's uh, understand that but one of the key things is taking the pressure off yourself not thinking about you think about your audience if it's one to one or whether it's a group who are they what are their expectations what what's in their head th that at that moment um thinking about them it and you know here's the key to it be the virtual recipient become that person you know what are they what have they been doing that morning and that sounds funny but you know are they they're not just sitting there going oh great Debbie Cat's going to speak now I'm going to sit here and really take it all in no are they hell you know <laughs> they're just thinking um I've got all those emails to do and I've got that and then that, that's happened and, and then there's and then I banged the car as I came in today and there's this and, there, and my conservatory roof's leaking uh, I'm saying that from personal experience here but you know that but you know this sort of thing so what you've got to do is you've got to hook in you said the word hook didn't you get the hook hook into what are the things that they're trying to deal with what are their problems now one of the things I, I helped some accountants recently who um you know they come on to networking I love them dearly and they say hello I'm so and so I'm an accountant we do VAT and end of year figures and this well of course you do you're a bloody accountant you know that's what you do but don't tell me about that tell me why I should come to you tell me what you can do for me remember what's in it for me now, what I told those uh, accountants to do when they do their presentations is not to come on and say anything about them, how long they've been in their offices, and they do it up in the cloud and how wonderful they are and they're all fully qualified. I don't give a poop about that, actually. I want to know, can you help me with the real problem that I've got with that HMRC page where I was going to get my um, uh, tax holiday for a while or whatever it was and and the page was a well I'm just making this up now but whatever it was because that's what I want to know so if I come on and say I can get that page sorted for you you know that HMRC page the one where your hair's in tufts and this you know and I can see that they're not saying anything they're not even saying they're accountants they're not saying their name they're not saying anything but they're just tapping in to the problem or what's top of mind for that audience or that person okay and that's a secret okay because nobody really cares well they do I mean what credibility and then you've got to be qualified but they, they, and they so do on. they do but, uh, sorry to cut you off but they do after they've had the when they're having the conversation but they don't initially absolutely. right initially you absolutely. need that punch you need that hook and you know uh, it's one of those things and one of the best things I give advice to when I coach clients on, on, on doing content and creating content is, you know, you are a catalyst to the information. You, you are the catalyst. It's not actually about you. Sorry. Hate to be that bearer of bad news. It doesn't actually matter about you. Well, that's it. It's not about you. It's about them. And what, remember with, with them, you know, what's in it for me, what they can get. But here's the second one. I've got another second lovely little thing because that, that's in it. What's in it for me? And then, oh, yeah, you can do that. Oh, that's lovely. But here, fear is the key. Carlton, fear is the key. Now, I'm not saying you frighten people to death. You don't give them a, a you know, a heart attack or anything. Well, although I do, obviously, with Mr. Squeaky coming out and all that sort of thing. But quid, quid, what happens if I don't? What happens if I don't now? If you can plant that little seed of mm, mm, in their mind, because look, you know, the only sure thing in life, guaranteed, the only thing is that we're going to die. Fortunately, we don't know when. That's lovely because obviously we're having a lovely conversation here and I want to carry on for a while. So, but you know, um, we don't know that. Okay. But we do know. So now, why doesn't everybody have a will? OK, why doesn't it? Because I, I deal with will writers and, and they're, they're trying to get people to. Now, the thing is, we all know that you should have a will because, you know, that's going to happen. But when do people do it? When do they, Carlton? It's when either somebody they know 
has popped off, sadly, and, and there's been some mess up and they couldn't get this and the money had to go there and it was all to the wrong people and all that, they were, Ooh, you know. Or they've had a health fright or something and they go, oh, we better get our, you know, our, our stuff in order. So it's only when you have that little tinge of fear, that little sharpness up the posterior that people actually do things. Now, if you can actually introduce, this is where the clever part comes in. If you can actually introduce that into your little bit of um, funniness and so on, okay, then that's, you've got them because you've got the what's in it for me and they, yeah, and then you've got the little bit of fear and bang, you know, it happens. And that's what generates the um, action. That's the call to action. Um, otherwise, it may still just sit bubbling along. Um, yeah. Oh, that's nice, but yeah, thanks, but no thanks. I think it, yeah, exactly. I think it's one of those things. And what jumped to mind just as you were mentioning that was something that I I did and I have done through networking for a very long time, which is everyone's given 60 seconds right and when you start networking you get this 60 seconds and it's very intimidating and you're very worried about it and i changed my mindset around it i said okay i'm given 60 seconds what one sentence can i say and then move on so i'm not actually going to worry about with a sentence all i'm going to say is a sentence to engage interest for those who may be interested in talking to me. And normally the sentence is, would you like to reach X number of people, the X being the number of people I've reached that month, in your business? Question mark. Pause. That's it. Because what I'm doing there isn't a very long, long spiel of rubbish that they're not going to remember anyway. It's a very bang, straight away, do you want this outcome? If you do, you have to have a conversation with me. Right. And that leans back to that fear or that opportunity cost, however you want to articulate it, mm-hmm. of what happens if I don't do this? Because I think sometimes, yeah. and I remember it really, really well, we look at investments in business sometimes. And maybe if business is like it is at the moment where things are like, oh, I don't know, should we stop investing? Is that the safe decision? Actually, mm-hmm. sometimes that could be the reason why you go under because you don't make that investment because mm-hmm. your competitors are going to, right? The, the, other thousands of people that we've discussed at the start of the show are going to make that investment, right? So how do yeah. how do you make investments? How do you consider that if things are, you know, not breadline, but are not where you want? What's your kind of response to that? Because I think that question is the one that a lot of people are asking right now, which is, well, right, my back's maybe against the wall. Maybe I've got a month. Maybe I've got two months. How do I fix it? Well, you, 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 you've just used a, a magic word there. You used competitors. You've used competitors because obviously if you're not there, people will go somewhere. They will go elsewhere. So what are your competitors doing? See, the, the problem about running a business is it's, it's, that's a misunderstanding of, of the word, running a business. You don't just know your own business. You have to know the sector. You have to know your competitors. And here's a, here's a big low for a lot of people you have to do preparation when you're doing uh, any sort of presenting any sort of communication and that's that's actually awkward for some people because they can't be bothered and if I say that and that's one of the things uh, being lazy it, it is is one of the problems because people focus on their business but they don't look elsewhere they don't look outside now looking at your competitors what are they up to what are they doing and this is back to my little thing about the fear is the key if you're when you're talking to whoever either a whole audience or just one person and you just drop in something about the fact that you see that and you mention a major competitor that they should know about obviously they should um then they go oh are they or well who knows that so that must be right so understanding competitors understanding the sector because the sector where are the trends I mean I know it's a lovely light and I'm looking marvelous but I remember a time before the internet before Google we had to go to business libraries and they didn't even have computers then yes I know yeah it wasn't a quill pen though but you know um and you had to write things down you weren't even allowed to take the books away now all you do is you go Google what's this what's that you could in half an hour you've got the world there all the details all the trends everything from all the resources you know and I personally I do believe that there's an element of of either it 
it is fear themselves. They're so focused on their business, running their business, making sure that is happening. They don't look outside and they don't get that big view. Mm. I don't know if, if that's what you think. You're nodding yeah. and I, no, no, I, you know, absolutely. I do. I do. Absolutely. And I, it's, it's what people... It comes from, it comes from two people. I mean, there's, there's two places I can go to this. The one I think I'll go with is some people always look short term, right? They're always trying to put out the fire yeah. from yeah. today, yeah. right? Now, I can understand that from a business owner's point of view. I can. I, I also have it. It's struck horror, right? But the thing that I always try and synergize it with is the understanding that, okay, I'm going to do what I need to do short term to fix the problems that appear for whatever reason, okay? Whatever they end up being. Fantastic. There's sometimes where there's none. Cool. Wonderful. Live for those days. Great. But also, per day, <laughs> per week, I track and say, I need to make sure I still am doing midterm, long-term growth stuff. I still need to be investing time, energy, resources, money, etc. Whatever my yardsticks are at the time, I still need to be doing those things. Because if I don't, when it comes round to it being the midterm, short-term, long-term, whatever it ends up being, whichever bit I'm not tackling, there will be larger fires there that I won't have necessarily the prep work, the momentum, yep. the time, the momentum, etc. to fix. Because... The problem mm -hmm. is we look at how we're making money today, 95% of cases, because we have, in most cases, especially at the moment, I can imagine, money-related problems today. But what about money-related problems next week, next month, next year? Mm -hmm. Everyone is still going to need to make a living in those, in those points. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get so hemmed up and so focused on, I'm going to fix the short-term thing that we forget we well, exactly in theory the want to be in business longer than tomorrow right 95 percent want You're to so be right. in business longer than You're tomorrow so but what are you doing to support that action because you won't be in business beyond tomorrow if you don't also nurture those elements and those things now well absolutely You're spot on You're spot on Carl. And, and you know obviously i'm i'm in business to help people to do that, uh, we, we both are, uh, but for me, and you mentioned the people who you know, slightly lacking confidence or, well, what, what, you know, not even know what, where to start. And, you know, it's a bit like buying a car. If you, you don't buy a car and then learn to drive normally, I mean, you know, you, you normally learn to drive and then, you know, you get a car. But if, if you got a car somehow, you, you know, you wouldn't expect just to drive it off perfectly you know we've got the old you know kangaroo petrol and and you know whoa, you know we, 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 we take lessons most people take lessons or or, or certainly for any type of skill you you read up we're back to google again you know or youtube or whatever but anyway you you, you find out the details you you train yourself now why don't people invest in themselves so if they have a even a slight confidence issue or if they're not getting the take up for their um, presentations or or, or or communications why don't they just spend a, a little bit of time and and obviously money investment investment you said investment in time and money um, in, in improving that and making sure because what fascinates me Carlton is that people go they pay to belong to a, a networking group okay so there's a subscription there they pay to go to the meetings okay and their time is is or could be paid for elsewhere. So that's three lots of financial investment that they've got into these um, events that they go to. And yet the majority of people, and I'll be perfectly honest, turn up and do the same presentation to the same people time and time again. How do they think that that is going to make anybody uh, interested? I mean, I know people's familiarity and there's a sort of, but when you go to other places, you must have an understanding of different audiences. You must have something different. That the, the with him and the wids, yeah. And each time that this is what it's a bit like going to um, an, lots of exams and writing the same answers for the history questions, the geography questions, the maths questions, and everything. It's bonkers. So, so I I think that yeah, it is. Your your points are so valid that people really do need to um get a grip basically <laughs> in a nutshell get a grip uh look at their business see where the problems are tackle things now be brave you have to take brave 
pills. You know, get your long trousers on and 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 go out there and do something because it's not going to get any easier. I think, uh, yeah, um, I, I mean, I had to inject here because I know you're making a, a very important point, but the, the thing that jumped to mind to me was no one's coming to save you, right? So you have to save absolutely. yourself, I'm, right? Absolutely. But sometimes yeah. that's very overwhelming and that come that can't, can become very difficult to do so that for those people who may be in that position when they're consuming this piece of content fantastic this found you at the right time consider that a one percent compounding effect across days is always going to be better mm -hmm. than doing ten percent then doing fuck all then doing ten percent then doing fuck all because you don't gain momentum that way right no. 95 percent of the time especially if my personal mental health has gone to shit because of whatever reason business personal blah 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 blah, blah whatever right i'm not going to sit here and cry about it necessarily but i'm aware sometimes that my mental health isn't as strong as i would like it to be so i move the yardsticks for that week i say okay so the win today is i showed up and i did this thing fantastic right and when my mental health or etc or when my reality is better then I can move the R6 back, right? But it's sometimes, and I think sometimes people who consume content regularly may think that you just hit yourself with the bludgeon stick for the sake of it. Sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to actually be heavily disciplined to go, I don't want to do this. I'm going to do it anyway because it's what's necessary, right? But also sometimes you need to say, I did a 1% improvement today. And as long as I continue to do that, I will win because of compounding effects on 1%. And I think that sometimes people that they they sometimes get disheartened because they didn't take the win, they didn't win the big job, they didn't get that ten percent improvement today. But did you get the one percent? Well, that, that's it. it. It is slowly, slowly, isn't it? And and I think if if people work with professionals and get a little bit input, they then I mean when I'm training people, I, I give them the skills to then go on and develop and adapt those to any type of situation. I don't just give them uh, the opportunity to, to create one presentation so they go out and, you know, it's a killer presentation because anyway, that's not always going to work, but I give them the skills. But more than that, Carlton, we're back to confidence. We're back to um, some very basic stuff here. You know, self-belief, and you said that earlier on, you talked about self-belief and that's the case. Now, if you're if you're working away and um, you do choose to put some investment time and obviously a little bit of money in in, in some training, um, whether it's with me, whether it's whoever, you know, what we're talking about here is the skills to know with confidence, OK, that you are doing the right thing, that your messages are going to be correct. Uh, that, that, that you're going to be able to interpret the, the audience and, and read an audience and see what's going on. Because here's a, here's a wonderful thing. We're getting terribly serious. I thought I'll just put these on because these are my best latest prop because these are what people really need to use when they're communicating because you've got two of these and one of these and people should use them in proportion. Now, when you're being... Um, presented to most of the time that's what happens you're presented to you're talked at you get this huge amount of information and poor old brains can't work now i would be able to tell people do you know you need three key messages that's all three key messages that's all the people can take in whether it's 60 seconds or even an hour all together you know you can't, people can't just take it in we know that don't we so just keep your information simple. Actually, I've gone on a bit to delivery now, haven't I, actually? But never mind. Or is it segues? Marvellous. But no, it's really important because you said about being overwhelmed and you said about... And this is... Some people just can't face it. They just can't face it. And that's why they have the same presentation. That's why they go to the same groups. It's familiarity. It's well, they get, they, it's I was going to say, they get comfortable, right? They, uh, it's safe. The, the, the principle of, for me anyway in life in general especially in business especially at the moment is you have to do things that make you feel uncomfortable consistently right when i first went to networking it was uncomfortable when i first did a presentation it was uncomfortable when i first did a podcast it was uncomfortable when i first did a video it was uncomfortable but now these all the above has become comfortable so now i'm questioning and saying okay let's tangibly look at what i'm doing and 
how does that help the business? How does that help me, my self-development, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, mm-hmm. from the short term, midterm and long term? And am I getting the value, the subjective thing that we look at, right, from that activity? And if I'm not, yeah. in the nicest way possible, this is not personal attack, whatever, I'm going to have to remove it from my day-to-day investment of time because time is the only tangible resource we can't get back. Mm. Technically, if you know, understand how money works, you have unlimited money, right? You may not have all access to it at the time because you haven't won those jobs, you haven't won, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But technically, once you understand how You've got the potential, money's huh? there, you have unlimited money, yeah. right? But also, you understand the the levers and the building blocks and the economy as a whole, right? And that's, you know, as I said at the beginning, if you're creating content, you should consider and understand that some audiences are going to change in what they want. They're going to change. And the economy we were in 12 months ago is not the same as now. But also, the pain points, because of that fact, are going to drastically change, yeah. right? In the pandemic, there was this massive surplus of money because stimulus, loans, et cetera, et cetera, right? But that meant you could operate differently to you can operate now, right? We're now at the opposite end of that spectrum. So you still should be investing. But the honest question Mm -hmm. I think people have to ask themselves that sometimes uncomfortable is, can I remove some of my financial investment and invest my time instead, right? Now that's unfortunately going to be counterintuitive for what we both are looking for. But sometimes that's actually the best decision for that business at the time to survive the long and midterm. Because as I said earlier, yes, you should be doing short term, midterm and long term, but it doesn't matter short term and midterm if you die tomorrow as a business. Right. So you do need to balance it. It's, yeah, that you know, it's, it's not about, oh, I'm going to make all these lovely investments and then make myself go bust. That's not the point. The point is to validate and understand the value that you gain from those investments because people as a concept are value sensitive, not price sensitive. If you get a huge amount of value, regardless of what the cost is, as in the sticker, the price we add to it, right? We will get, we will still add it. We will still do it, right? We will still pay it, right? We will find a way to find that money if it's not there, right? And something which I thought about and have been thinking about for a long time is when things go wrong, don't consider it as a mistake or something that's gone wrong. Consider it as a way for you to create skills to then see that reality beforehand. And I think we can also do this when we deliver, when we deliver our presentation, when we deliver our content, when we deliver our sales pitches, whether we deliver, whether that's a cold outreach sales pitch or that's a warmed lead that's come to you or both, right? Because I think, especially at the moment, to be honest, businesses, if you're watching this and you're not doing both, I question if you're going to be around because you need to be doing stuff that's uncomfortable. For a very long time, the idea of getting told no when I put a proposal to a a client or or a person or et cetera, was uncomfortable it's becoming more comfortable because i'm doing oh, numbers gosh, yes. of it a day right mm. but that's the only way i think a lot of businesses are going to survive this mm. period is doing a mm. mix between that midterm long term that i've already talked about but also that gr- what i would call grunt hard difficult selly i'm going to call a random person i don't know and try and sell them on the phone i'm going to send that dm i'm going to send that email right yeah. but well, I was just going to say you're 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 just so spot on with this. And short, medium, and long term is such a a, a you know impo- important strategy. Where and people just it's fascinating. They just don't seem to see that. But when you say about calling random people, because I um, a lot of what I do is say it's not just presentations. It's it is communication. It's just getting at because when people do cold calling it shouldn't be cold calling should it i mean yes it, they might not know the person but boy have they done their work have done their homework first their research they know about the company they know what that person again they know what's going on in those people's heads now years ago for instance i, I worked in the nightclub industry hard to imagine no, the gold lame leotards uh, long gone now but um the, the getting a license wasn't the issue for a new nightclub because they could all say uh you know that they got all their stuff in place and all their uh, security and all their um checks and balances and so on even though the local people might have gone no way however a year later 
getting a license renewed after people have been whittling in their gardens and vomiting over their cars for a year. OK, and they were going to that um, hearing with the, <laughs> with the magistrate, then, you know, getting the license renewed was the problem. But what I would be able to say, I would approach the uh, marketing directors because uh, I knew what was keeping them awake. It was a, somewhere in their estate. They would be having uh, a, a bit of a problem coming up with a license renewal. Now, because I knew that and I could talk in terms of the pain and, and this is an, just a, a very quick little another little nugget for, for, for you, well, not just you, but everybody um, is when you're talking about, you know, the various issues that people are facing, do it in terms of feelings and emotions, not facts and figures, feelings and emotions, because that is what makes people do things. OK, um, and I'll give you the example of, you know, the NSPCC or the RSPCA at Christmas. Um, they do something slightly different. The facts and figures are of really, you know, wonderful um, charities and, and all the reasons you should be donating. They're all exactly the same. At Christmas, they're inundated with money because what do they do? They do those TV adverts where you're immersed instantly in the feelings and emotions of a, a child um, in trouble or, or an animal being more wet or something, and you can't escape. Immediately, you're immersed in the feelings and emotions. Out comes your mobile phone, boom, 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 before you even know it, and you've donated. And that is, um, remember to win, you know, um, what, what happens if I don't, okay? The, the feelings and emotions are so bad, you don't want those. So if we can get people to think in feelings and emotions, when they're making those cold calls and they, they're, you know, um, getting people to, to, to think rationally about, oh, um, my, we don't want that or... Whatever, whatever it is, feelings and emotions are the key to getting business. I think yep. it's a really important point because I think sometimes we look at data, we look, especially in the marketing space, we're like, oh, I did this analytical thing, right? At the end of the day, all you're doing with ads, content, presenting, whatever you're doing, the, the tool, the technique, which is what we're discussing, right, is trying to connect you, the human being, to another human being, right? And yeah. this is where... Yes how your client feels when they work with you. This is where social proof, testimonials, etc. This is where they come into their own because it allows yeah. people to actually feel what it's like to work with you. This is yeah. why yes. I continue to do the behind the scenes videos that we've done because the feedback I got when I started them was, I feel like I've been on set with you even though I haven't, right? Oh. That is that worth... Didn't. Yeah. More money than ever because it removes the barrier for people going, oh my God, that's terrifying. I'm going to be on a set with Colin, right? There isn't that barrier anymore because they already feel like they've done it one, two, three, seven, ten, fifteen 10, 15 times yeah. because they yeah, technically yeah, yeah. have. It's a parasocial relationship. It's a parasocial way of doing it because they're only seeing it from my perspective. However, there. But Absolutely. they're going to feel yeah. like they've actually been on set with me, which means when it comes to the conversation about potentially them coming on set with me, it's not intimidating. It's not scary. They know what it's going to be like. They know how it's going to feel. Right. And I think sometimes if you do, Absolutely. if you do content, if you do presentations, you can get the same feeling across if done right. I guess then the question comes, I'll ask you, how do we get that emotion? across how do we get that feeling across for for someone who's looking to go into their first presentation their first networking meeting their first video piece of content etc etc well you it's perfectly right it, it is difficult and that's why people do tend to need a little bit of help with that but the point is it's all about authenticity it's about being real it's a bit about understanding both themselves but i keep going back to the same point understanding the audience, whether it's one person or, or a group or whatever, you know, what's in their heads? What are they thinking about? What are they feeling at the time? And it's relating to that. OK, you, you know, if, if you can't relate to it, if I'm honest, then you shouldn't really be trying to sell to them because you, you're not going to get the, the, the right thing for them. It's not right. Now, that's why, you know, yes, I can be bonkers, but I can also be extremely serious. And I was talking about some of the um, crisis management situations where, um, you know, we, we had we had some very difficult situations that I dealt with where, you know, um, with fires and fatalities and all sorts of situations. Um, 
So you can tell what the tone of voice has changed now. But that, that's because I can relate to people. I can relate to people at different levels in different circumstances. Now, you have to show people that you can do that. And it is a skill, Halton. This is, this is the point. This isn't, it's, it's, in a way, it's a performance. And I say that a presentation is a performance. You can't just go in and say, well, take me as you, you know, you see, what you see is what you get, you know, love me or love. It, it's, it, you, you have to make an effort, show those people that you've thought about them, that you know what problems they're facing, that you understand the pain, whatever it is, the, the, the hassle, the anxiety that it's causing them, and that actually that you can sort it for them. Okay, now if you can relate at that level, then you're still authentic, you're still being yourself, but you do have to perform. You do have to not learn lines, but you have to get the material there because we're back to, you know, what's in it for me. If you don't get people into that, remember, and I was saying, here's my marvellous ears, because communication, see, communication with your ear flaps down, you can't, it just nothing happens. So you've got to make sure people are listening to you first. And you do that by relating. I mean, it's like if somebody comes to you and they say they've just had a, an awful problem with, I don't know, they've just had an accident or, or you know, they've, they've broken their ankle. And, you say, and then you say, oh, well, never mind that. What about, um, what, you know, you say, oh, I'm really sorry about that. You know, how can I help? You know, it must be really painful. Yeah, you empathize. Okay, well, let's call it business empathy. Okay, because, and there's ways of doing that. But it, you have to come out of your own little bubble and think about them because this isn't, we're back to the thing we started with, Carlton. It's not you selling what you've got. It's you helping them with what they've got. It's helping them get or well, get rid of what they've got, actually, whether it's a problem or an issue or, or helping them in some way. And I think that's a really important point to end on because I think some people, when they look at cold, they look at outreach, they look at et cetera, whatever strategy or a technique you're using, they sometimes, number one, they're not doing the volume that they should be doing to actually get those yeses, right? Because when we do cold outreach specifically, and the reason why I'm focusing a lot on cold is because, and it's called cold because of the technique. It's not actually necessarily cold, as you've mentioned, right? But yeah. the reason why I mention it is it's one of the quickest ways to get revenue back into the business in a pinch, right? Yeah. That's the yeah. reason why I'm focusing on it because there is a percentage and it's me understanding the audience, understanding the market, et cetera, and saying, Absolutely. actually, no, yeah. yes, you might be in a bit of trouble right now. I'll tell you what, here's your solution to that trouble point right now. Here's that solution to that pain point. But the crux and the thing that hopefully those who are listening now can take from this is it's purely down to your own willingness to fix your own problem number one but also number two your ability to control your mind because i've had a lot of things i'm sure you've had etc i don't want to speak for you but personally i've had a lot of times where it's like oh this might end me as a business right i'm still here it didn't right so how didn't it the reality was I worked out the solution to that problem. And then I said, okay, I've got multiple problems. How do I fix those problems? Okay, start with the first one, fix that one. Start with the next one, fix that one, etc. And work your way through and break it into manageable chunks. And then be kind on yourself when you fix them. Because I think sometimes we go, I fixed it, so I now need to keep pushing. But what will happen, mm -hmm. and you'll notice it once you've done it, is your entire body will become exhausted and you'll have no reason. You'll be like, why am I so tired? That makes no sense. I haven't done anything. Well, yes, you have. You've been mentally oh, strained and you've fixed yes. a bunch of problems yes. and you dealt with a load of additional cortisol, the stress mm -hmm. hormone, mm -hmm. that you otherwise didn't necessarily normally have in day-to-day -day life. So yes, you don't feel mm -hmm. it now, but that's because you're in fight or flight. You're trying to fix the problem. You're firefighting. Yeah. Yes. Oh, well, the, you know, the, the mental stress and, and the anxiety. And I think you're, you, you've also hit on another very good point, Carlton. And you talk about, um, you know, understanding the problem because you need to be crystal clear about what you're doing, uh, you know, what you're actually, you say, about adding value. What, what value do you actually add? What is it that you actually do? And I know we say, um, well, I like an accountant or I've got infra accountants today, but whatever it is, you know, but, but, you know, I mean, a lot of people, um, 
have had bad experiences with accountants who, you know, and, and it hasn't worked out. Well, that doesn't matter. If you need an accountant, and I suggest that most businesses do because we're not all math geniuses or, or figure people. We, we run our business and that's not to do with accounts, okay? Um, th then you, you need to find somebody that you can relate to who understands your problems. And, and it's, it all comes back to this authenticity, the personality, and as you said, it's difficult to get your personality over if you're really anxious and lacking in confidence and inexperienced at doing and presenting. But, you know, we, people, we're not talking here about great long courses or, or anything like that. I mean, you know, people can pick up. I, I help people in what, one session, but three sessions is, is the average that I, I usually work with a client. Well, and, and in that, then they get they get the understanding so much more about their business. It's not just about presentation techniques. We go into the depths of their business and their clients and what they're looking for what the clients are looking for. And that is, comes as quite a surprise to a lot of my clients. So um, th there's so much involved here. It's, it's, it's not just about presenting and, you know, being like, well, oh, our friends, Romans and kind of, it's, it's or, or having, you know, funny ears and stuff like that. It's not like that at all. It's understanding and being crystal clear about what you're offering. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, I think, there's going to be a percentage of people who may have consumed the show up to this point who want to at least have an initial conversation with you about potentially working with you, potentially, you know, getting some feedback, connecting, et cetera, et cetera. So where's best for people to connect with you and, you know, continue this conversation outside of the show? Well, I've, my website is onscreenskills.co.uk or debbie at debbycat.com. That's cat with two T's, Debbie, D-E-double-B-I-E at debbycat, C-A-double-T dot com, my email address. I'm on LinkedIn though, so I'll be happy to link up with there. Fantastic. And for those who maybe are going to take inspiration from this conversation, going to take that what first step into content creation, presenting, communicating in a more strategic way, in a way that makes more authentic sense to themselves, what piece of advice, if you were going to give advice, would you give to those people? Well, he's an absolute little nutmeg. Um, they must have at least two clients who absolutely love them. OK, two clients. Go back to those clients and say, um, could you spare me five minutes just to answer a couple of questions? And I don't you know, it's not like I want a testimony or anything. Very precise. OK, five minutes, two questions. And then when they say yes, which they will do because they love you and it's a good relationship, you ask them this question. Um, before we work together on whatever the tip it is, you know, what were your feelings and emotions? about that whatever it was okay you could also ask them a supplementary question why did you come to us or me but then you could say after we worked together what were your feelings and emotions about that you know whether it was you know your accounts or your public speaking or whatever it was okay now don't edit what they say use the actual words because the words that they use about their feelings and emotions will be exactly the same feelings and emotions and the words in the people's heads of prospective clients, okay? And that absolutely little piece of gold dust action should provide them with some real material to take this forward, okay? Because those are the things, the feelings and emotions. Once they've got that, they can work on um, all the other material that, that they can stop with their um, hooks right at the beginning of their attention grabbing or whatever, but they will know the answers. And, you know, most people sit there, you know, like the great thinker, you know, pondering about what they should do. Go out and ask, the, you've got the clients, you've been in business a while, I'm sure. So at least two clients will love you. They, they are the starting point for your research. Thanks so much for joining me, ladies and gents. I hope you took value from this episode. If you did, want to be subscribed so you do not miss the interviews we're going to be sharing on this channel in the new year. Thank you ever so much for joining me once again, and I'll see you very, very soon.